Hey guys, hope everyone is doing well. Today I'll be showing you my portfolio. All right guys, so here is my portfolio. As you can see, it's eight and a half by 11. And when I got it done, like, I was like, ooh, this is pretty cute. I wasn't sure what to expect because I just have never printed out this type of portfolio book, but I really like it. And where I got it printed out, wow, I can't even remember. <laughs> I got it printed out. Okay, I have a great memory. I'll, I'll get I'll get back to where I got it printed out. But yeah, and it's a matte texture. Although I love the feel of it, the one thing I realized is obviously after I purchased it is that with this type of matte texture, it almost feels like it has this kind of grip to it. And <laughs> let me tell you, if you wear a lot of lotion or if you got clammy hands like me, or you know got any kind of oils or lotion on your hand you just you gotta be extra careful or wipe it off because it will show up on here i don't know if you guys can really see like the kind of i don't know if you can see it or not like maybe the camera like maybe the camera can't okay there you go see like those kind of fingerprints from like wearing whatever lotion or oil or whatever on your hands um that's the one thing like which i was like oh Maybe I shouldn't have went with matte. Matte looks really great, but uh, yeah, if you wear a lot of lotion, I would suggest not to get the matte one or just be careful, just be extra cautious. I guess I'm very handsy and clearly just got all the lotion and oil on here. So that was the one drawback. So that's what I have to say about that. But otherwise, I really like the turnout of the book and let's get into it. All right, guys, so this is a platter I had set up for you guys. I hope you like this cute little setup that I have. And so there's my portfolio, as you've already seen. And then all the cards on top, you could, as you can see, is my business cards. And then there's my resume. But let's get to the main meal first, the portfolio. And then we can go over the resume. I don't know if you guys are really interested in that or not. All right, let's get to the main meal now. So that's my cover with my logo and then there's this parchment looking piece of paper that is supposed to protect everything. I also forgot to mention I got lay flat pages which basically means the paper lays flat and it doesn't like concave up. You'll see as I turn the pages. You'll see what I mean. And there is my first page. I wrote a little ditty because I also enjoy writing. So this is my this is my chance to get up my creative writing and show them a little bit of my creativity through my writing. And take a look at that. I mean, if you really want to read it, I can I can post it up on IG if you guys really want to know exactly what I wrote. And then here's my pages, my, my content page. I didn't number the pages, just that was just a personal personal choice. I wanted to just just show just show them what I have, like lay out all my projects. But I just didn't want to number it. That was just my choice, but you can do what you please. It's up to you. So the first project is the music set for Rihanna. And I had a lot of fun with this project. This was I think my Remember, I think it was like my second or third semester project, so it was a while back, but it is still one of my favorite projects because I really got to have fun and experiment, especially with Photoshop. As you can see, this I did this on Photoshop and that was so much fun and I really got to like push my boundaries and push the edges. So this is one of my favorite projects. So then we have a poster promoting Rihanna's made up uh, album that I made up called Tribal Trance. I just kind of just conjured something up and I thought, okay, I'm gonna go with it, I love Rihanna. And then here is the album cover. I also even, I made up names for songs she might have for this album, which I know it sounds kind of funny, but I just went all out on it. So I had a lot of fun with it. And I even made a second version. So this was a kind of like the blue green version of it. And now I have another version, which is like this kind of like green magenta version of the poster. And I exper experimented with it even more. So this is the poster. And then I also made a, a article mock-up of how it would look like in a magazine. And then of course, the album cover again with the, with the made up songs, as you can see. 
Definitely had a lot of fun with this one. And my second project is a wayfinding project. And this one I did, I think, actually I think in my sixth semester. So yeah, my last semester. So we had to do a wayfinding project for this. Basically, I mean, I chose Tokyo, but you could choose any country, any city you want, and then choose a design festival that you wanted to recreate the signage for their for their festival, basically. So that's a mock-up of my ideas. And yeah, and then the signage of the directions, where to park, the food court. So I was kind of inspired by this kind of lava lamp look. And I thought it was fun and playful and I thought it went well because it is a design festival so I thought I could still do something that's kind of fun but something that's still clean so I went with black and white and yeah, had a lot of fun with that. And my third project is a bike plan and yeah, I mean I can go on and on about all my projects but I just thought I'd show you it. I don't want to go through every single project to give you the whole rundown of it because this video would be really long but I thought I'd at least give you an idea of what I have in my portfolio so maybe that would help you guys get inspired for what you want to put in or get ideas for a portfolio. Yeah, so I had a lot of fun with it. I mean if you guys have any questions about any projects please feel free to comment below and let me know. This is just to give you a kind of like idea of what I have but yeah, again, like I said, it's going to take way too long to like speak about every single project and go into detail about it. But yeah, that's what I have. I think I have about, God, I can't even remember. I think like eight to ten different projects in here. And yeah, I mean, a lot of these projects were personal projects. But I ended up also even adding projects that I had done on my own or extensions of projects. So this is also one of my favorite projects. And uh, it's actually representing the artist Gemma O'Brien, her work. So I had to make like a website. Actually, this is my own idea. I wanted to make a website for it. And even a mobile app. And then also the original project was an actual booklet showcasing her work in a gallery. But I ended up just taking it further and making it in through like a website, mobile, and even on a desktop website. So I had fun with that because I wanted to play around with XD. So I just ended up going crazy with that. And my next project is a Kleenex box. This was a lot of fun. I actually got this printed out. And this is actually another project that I really enjoy. Basically saying I enjoy. I mean, I would say whatever projects you put in your portfolio, you want to showcase your best work. So don't put in work where you feel kind of like iffy about or not sure about because like, especially if you're going to go and show this to employers, if you show them work that you're not sure about, it's going to come through in your confidence and you're not going to feel like proud of it, right? So show your best work. Put your best foot forward is what I have to say. So yeah, this is one of my other <laughs> favorite projects and this was a magazine project in my third semester. We had to come up with a magazine or either take an, an existing magazine and create the next issue for it. And I ended up just coming up with my own magazine because I just, I'm just, I, I'm just extra. And so I came up with this concept of a magazine and it's basically showcasing all kinds of artwork, art from like you know, a traditional art painting to illustration to even makeup, even performance artists. So it's just anything creative and amazing. So uh, the idea behind the name hypnotic is that amazing art hypnotizes. I know maybe that sounds a little cheesy, but that's something I actually believe in that amazing art hypnotizes you or mesmerizes you, even if it's for like a second. Yeah. Yep. So I showcased some really awesome artists like Menzel Bauman. As you can see, and I even had a, lot, had a lot of fun with setting the type. Again, I went with like utilizing these amazing artists' colorful work and then setting it with really clean, clean, clean minimal type. And I was kind of inspired by this kind of like high class art gallery kind of look. So if that makes any sense, that's the vibe I was trying to throw off with the type. And yeah. So yeah, some awesome artist, Kaylin Schwab. His work is really awesome too. Beautiful work. And 
so this is my project and it's uh, for gosh I don't know, well, words words are hard sometimes guys sorry but yeah so this is an app that I came up with and it's called creativity sparks this was for a fifth semester class and basically the idea behind of it is the app is basically supposed to simulate your creativity through games simulations and just like things to get you thinking and to think in novel creative ways so this was a logo idea for it and then this is what it would look like on xd like just the app starting up and then it kind of flashes and flickers and then goes to the home page and yeah and then we had to make a whole branding for it as well and that's the mock-up i also made a I made a second yet, yeah, so this is the second version of it as well. And yeah, so I still use the same logo, but I kind of just changed what the inside looked like. And I think that's my last project yet. Yeah, that's my last project. And the last page just has a thank you note. Thank you for tuning in and some fun little creative copy that I came up with. Yeah, so that was basically my portfolio. I hope you guys enjoyed that. I will also give you some tips as well. All right, guys. So now to get into the tips and some ideas that might help you have a clear vision of what you want to do with your portfolio. So for my portfolio, I got this printed out at Picto. So now if you're in the GTA Toronto York area, you might be familiar with that. It's actually near Seneca York where which is where I went. So it was like a five it was five minutes away from there, funny enough, but I ended up just ordering it online because it, I was too lazy to go in person. Um, but yeah, so I got it printed at Picto and I actually got a discount on it. So what I paid for it, it did cost a pretty penny, of course, because, you know, I mean, it's a really nice quality book and it has very, like, good quality paper, ink, all of that. So it came up to $146, but I got, I think it was like 15, 15 or so percent off. So I saved 22 bucks, which, of course, as a student, I understand this is student life. You're on a budget. You got those student loans, student debt, all of that. I'm, I totally get it. So you want to save some money, right? So yeah, um, I got $22 off and that, <laughs> that was happy with that. And basically what I did, I signed up for their email. And usually like a lot of the times with a lot of products, services, like e-commerce websites, if you sign up with them, you usually get some kind of discount. So I would make sure like if you're going to, let's say, print, especially if you're ordering online and stuff, like make sure you sign up because you probably will get a discount code, which for a student that helps a lot. And if you're really curious, like if you like the whole style and look of my portfolio, I will give you a couple more details. So this is a hard, a premium hardcover matte book. And the inside is this kind of cotton black. Ugh, I think it, it was called cotton inside, the cotton inside black. I'm not 100% sure. Um, I can always double check for you guys. And the pages are premium lay flat. And the ink that I got was the Ultimate 7 ink. And guys, I actually did, I went back into my emails to search this all up for you guys. So not that I remember every single detail of it. Oh yeah, so yeah, so for the premium hardcover, I had the option of having an image so i thought it made sense to print my logo on it but of course you could do whatever makes sense for you i feel like a logo makes sense right it just went with the whole branding system as well right with like my my logo on my resume and then on my card as well so i ended up going with that and so some more tips also go on pinterest like if you're like kind of like overwhelmed with what you want to do with your portfolio because to be honest i was super overwhelmed and I was just like, oh my gosh, like just branding for myself. I was like, oh my God, like what should I go for? Like it's one thing to brand for someone else or like you're working on someone else's logo and branding, but doing it for yourself can can be a little bit confusing or even overwhelming. So I won't lie, I did struggle with that for a little bit, but it, it turned out like I ended up liking, of course, whatever I went with. But before that I had like so many different options and I kept changing my mind with the logos and colors that I wanted. 
so definitely go on pinterest there's so many cool like uh, portfolio inspirations you can find on there even instagram behance youtube that's why i'm doing this video i'm hoping that this will help you out so you maybe you'll get some inspiration or some ideas yeah so definitely get out there see what other people are doing you can get some ideas of what you want to do as well and so one other thing i remember my coordinator yeah my coordinator saying that for your portfolio try to Try not to make it super narrow with your style. And what I mean by that is show some variety in your work. I mean, you know, especially if you have a very specific style, like that's awesome and you can highlight that, but don't make that the only thought. I feel like when you're new, you wanna keep your options open because you never really know where you might end up unless you really have a very specific idea of the type of work you wanna do, the style of work you wanna do, but Personally, like I feel like you could potentially be cutting off opportunities by doing that. So I feel like, and that's not just me saying that again, like my coordinator even said that, have some variety because you never know where that can take you. And in the sense that when you're very specific and you're going to, you know, like interviews for your internships or potential employers and all of that, like having something very specific might kind of I don't want to say alienate them but it might throw them off in the sense that it's very specific and you might lose out on an opportunity because you're showing work that's so super specific right so show some work that has some variety to it of course work that you still enjoy and that you like but it's not like you know just like this one style and it's very specific to that like you want to show variety that's what i feel like makes sense too and I even remember with my first, my last internship actually, not my first internship, my last, so I've had two internships so far. So my last internship that I had, the one thing that they told me like at the interview, they said they really loved my portfolio and all of that. And they said the one thing that they really liked was that I had a lot of variety in my work. So I had work that was more playful and fun and very colorful but then I had stuff that was more clean and there was like a good balance of playful things and then minimalistic and clean projects as well so that's one thing that they really liked the variety of my style and again this was an agency so of course like it makes sense that they they they, they really like that because in an agency you're going to be working with all kinds of clients so during that internship i know i'm kind of going on but i'm like maybe this will help you guys i hope i'm not blabbing too much but when you're working in an agency you're going to be dealing with all kinds of different kinds of clients so so when i was working in that when i was interning at that agency i had clients that were more you know that had more of a playful style so i had to design things that were more illustrative and colorful versus then there was other clients that were more minimalistic and cleaner so then i had to kind of work around that and that worked well with me because i feel like i have a very adaptable style and like a very a variety in my style as well so that will work to your advantage especially if you want to do agency work another tip so with my resume I didn't get it printed out at the same place I got my portfolio printed out. I felt like now that I think about it, maybe that was kind of a mistake. I actually got this printed out at Staples. It still turned out fairly decent, but of course the quality is not as great as it could have been if I got it printed out, let's say at Picto or an actual proper print shop, right? Because like the printing at Staples is very limited, right? So um, yeah, there was a couple of things that I felt like could have been different or could have been better in quality i mean it still ended up working out but i think there's a couple of things that i felt like i could have changed when it came to the quality and all of that so uh, i would say print it out all at the same place especially if you're doing it at a proper print shop the reason why i ended up going to staples i know to some people <laughs> probably think this is like a no-no is just because i was like on a budget i already spent Quite a bit on my portfolio so i was trying to kind of cut some costs when it came to my resume and my business card and i feel like don't do that just like if you're gonna spend the money on the portfolio and i think just like get a proper resume printed out at the proper print shop that you're getting your portfolio printed out at i mean it worked out for me but the thing is i still like there was still some mistakes with the whole 
the way things printed and stuff, especially with the type of paper. Like I had to actually experiment with different kinds of paper because the color ended up looking different on different kinds of paper and then I had to kind of like settle on one because I was kind of on a tight deadline. So you could avoid all of that if you just get it printed out all at the same place and at a good quality print shop. So that's my last tip for today. I hope you guys enjoy that. I hope you got I got some ideas out of that, got some inspiration, some helpful tips. And if you enjoyed that, make sure to comment below. Let me know if you have any more questions. I'd love to help you guys out today. I realize I'm talking with my hands a lot. I do that. <laughs> and I hope you guys have an awesome day and stay safe. Take care.